What's up, Greg, and welcome back to another episode of Christmas Time. It's December, baby. You know what that means. Every year around Christmas time, I'm on the prowl looking for Christmas movies to watch and review on this channel. And to my surprise, the perfect one sort of just fell into my lap. I'm sure a lot of you have seen my video on the movie Spookly the Square Pumpkin. Well, it turns out that a sequel to that movie just came to Netflix. It's called Spookly and the Christmas Kittens. And I've watched it. I've watched it several times now while working on this video. And you know what? It's just as bad as Spookly the Square Pumpkin. I thought that maybe they would have improved on their storytelling skills, but they have not. Also, I've watched this a decent amount of times now, and I still have so many questions about the end of this movie. Without spoiling it too much, it does not paint Santa in a very good light. Kind of makes him seem like a little bit of a jerk, honestly. All right, let's just watch it. There once was a little lost kitten. He had given up hope of ever having a home. He'd stopped wishing on stars that he wouldn't be alone. So the movie starts out with Santa finding this Christmas kitten, this green and red kitten while he's delivering presents on the night of Christmas. There's this kind of creepy shot of Santa reaching into the shadows. He sort of looks like he's trying to grab us while he's grabbing the kitten and his face is totally engulfed in shadows and he honestly looks a little bit creepy. I I think they could have worked on the 3D model for him for a little while longer. But anyway, he adopts this cat. It cuts to one year later, so the cat's been living with Santa for a whole year. So things must be going pretty well with Santa and his Christmas cat. He found the Christmas cat in the snow. He adopted him. He named him Mistletoe. And they're just living a happy life together. And the cat has a nice new home. I have something for you. It's your very own collar. Let's take a photo so you'll always remember the day you got your collar. Why does Santa look like he's being held at gunpoint in this picture, dude? Like, I can feel the fear in his eyes. He's smiling, but it's like a grimace. I mean, Mistletoe looks fine. The Christmas cat, he's doing okay. He's got his hand up on Santa's chest, like, this is my man. This is my human. But Santa's just kind of like, take the picture, okay? Just take it. Just don't hurt me. Anyway, then we cut to Holiday Hill Farm, which, if you don't remember, is the farm where the whole movie Spookly the Square Pumpkin took place. And it looks like the whole gang, Spookly the Pumpkins and the Scarecrow, are all having a great time decorating the Christmas tree. On Holiday Hill Farm. Huh? <laughs> oh. <laughs> now, I don't know how long it's been since the first movie took place, like chronologically speaking. I don't know if it's been years, but at the very least, it's been two months because the first movie took place around Halloween. This movie's taking place around Christmas. So shouldn't these pumpkins be like rotting by now? I'm just saying, because this year we carved pumpkins for Halloween and they lasted for like all of two weeks before they became absolutely rancid. So I'm just speaking from personal experience here, but I'm pretty sure that like scientifically speaking, Spookly's head should be caved in and he should be full of mold and there should also be like a family of squirrels living him and eating him from the inside out. And I know, you know, that's not the most unrealistic part of this movie, but I'm just trying to understand the lore of these movies. Also, are these pumpkins Christian or do they just kind of celebrate Christmas as like a second holiday. <laughs> look, Jack, look! I caught a snowflake! Wow, you caught a snowflake during a snowstorm? where there's a ton of them falling from the sky. Good job, you idiot. Anyway, just like the first movie, this movie is a musical, and the first number is called Christmas Snow, and it's all about how when it snows on Christmas, that's Christmas Snow. It's snow, it's snow, it's Christmas Snow. Go tell everyone you know. It's not like it. And all in all, there's not really too much exposition because not much has changed since the first movie. It seems like we're pretty much picking up right where that left off. Christmas snowflakes sure are beautiful. Oh, they surely are, Spookly. But not nearly as beautiful as me, right, Jack? Well, <laughs> they are, uh, one of a kind, Bobo. <gasps> one of a kind? <laughs> Oh, thank you, Jack. <laughs> uh, okay, well, maybe not everything is the same, because I don't remember Bobo trying to seduce the Scarecrow in the last movie. What? That seems like a weird thing to throw in at the beginning of this movie. You think I'm a sexy pumpkin, right, Jack? You sentient pile of hay wearing human's clothes. You think I'm a sexy little gourd, don't you? I know the only thing that differentiates me from the other pumpkins is the fact that I'm wearing eyeshadow and lipstick. But you'd fuck me, right, Jack? There's a couple things going on at the beginning of the movie here. Big Tom and Little Tom who are the conjoined twin pumpkins, announced that they're going to be throwing a Christmas extravaganza, which is basically like a talent show. So there's gonna be auditions later on in the movie. But while they're all standing around talking about it, suddenly Spookly hears something. Do you hear that, Jack? 
I do. And it kind of sounds like bells. And out of nowhere, a giant ass snowball comes out of nowhere and like barrels towards them, smashes on the barn door, and out of the pile of snow comes Mistletoe the Christmas Kitten. <laughs> Great. First a square pumpkin, and now a green cat. And little Tom, being the asshole that he is and was in the last movie, he doesn't skip a beat. He has to make it known right away. Uh, hey, I'm gonna be an asshole about this, and I'm gonna single out the one thing that makes this cat different than everybody else, and I'm gonna let everyone know that I don't like it. A green cat. Anyway, you might be confused at this point, because I was at the beginning of the movie. I was like, wait, wasn't Mistletoe just with Santa? Where does this take place in the storyline? Because he was just with Santa, and now he's on the farm. Well, they don't ever explain this until the end of the movie. Just know that something happened, and Mistletoe got lost, and now he actually doesn't even remember his own name or like where he came from, because he hit his head so hard just now. I don't know what my name is. I can't remember anything. Look, there's a gold crown hanging from his collar. Maybe he came here looking for a queen and just doesn't remember. <laughs> oh. Okay, Bobo, chill, jeez. Now she's trying to get with the cat? I swear to God, dude, this is the horniest pumpkin I've ever seen. They turned her up a couple notches in this movie. It also doesn't help the fact that she's like the only woman character that's spoken so far and the only thing she's tried to do was like get with the guys. And also it's like seemingly a gold digger cause she's like, oh, he's got a fancy collar. I wonder if I can marry him and become a queen. Please give me the collar so I can see if it says where mistletoe is from. Oh, all right, if you insist. So Mistletoe goes off, runs to go find his collar, and Spookly wants to help, so he tries to get the whole gang to go with him to help Mistletoe. He could get hurt! He could find his way home and be celebrating Christmas by midnight tonight. Wait, Christmas by midnight tonight? It's not Christmas? It's Christmas Eve when this is taking place? Uh, then what was the song at the beginning of the movie about? Because I'm pretty sure it was about Christmas snow, and how Christmas snow is so special, because it only falls once a year on Christmas. But today's not even Christmas, so what happens if it snows tomorrow, huh? What's that gonna be called? Christmas Snow 2? Christmas Snow the Squeakwool? Answer me! Mistletoe chased that owl as fast as he could. Through streams, under branches, over rocks and wood. He ran as fast as a kitty cat can. It flew round and round. It flew into a clearing and dropped that collar right down on the ground. Okay, so that's a weird thing for the owl to do, right? Why did he do that? Why did he steal the collar like it was something he wanted, fly for miles, and then just drop it and keep flying? I thought it was gonna be some reason like, oh, this owl likes shiny things, and he saw the shiny sparkle of the collar, and he just had to have it. But now I'm kind of thinking, does this dude just like the thrill of stealing stuff? It's like he's a robber that goes up to people and he's just like, all right, motherfucker, give me the money, come on. And then he's got the money and he's running away and he's like, you'll never catch me alive. <laughs> Oh, it's not fun anymore. I don't want this shit. I feel like that's worse than stealing it because he just wanted it. He just stole it because he wanted to see Mistletoe's eyes as he flew away with it, that sick son of a gun. So now Mistletoe's just kind of stranded in the middle of this freezing cold forest. He ran so far away from the farm that he doesn't really know how to get back there. So he's just chilling in the middle of the snowstorm. He looked up at the stars for a moment or two and whispered a wish he thought would never come true. Well, 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 what have we here? So he looks up at a star and wishes a wish that he thought would never come true, and then a magic raccoon shows up. A raccoon shows up in a burst of sparkly magic. So, I don't know if that's what he wished for. I can't imagine it was. Like if I was stranded in a snowy forest during a blizzard, I don't think my first thought would be like, oh, I know just what I need right now. I need a magical rodent with human hands. I have just what you need right here. Let me see. Not so fast, my funny looking feline friend. How can I be sure you're worthy of such a gift? Have you been naughty or nice? I don't know. I can't remember. That's a suspicious answer. Like I know he hit his head and he really can't remember if he's been naughty or nice, but like you gotta explain a little bit more than that, dude. You can't just say, I don't remember. That's never a good answer. Especially when someone's asking you if you did something wrong or not. All right, Sonny, fess up. Did you kill all those people? Me? Huh. Oh, please. 
I don't remember. I suppose you might be worthy of what's in here, but I still can't just give it to you. Not unless you have something to give me in return. But I don't have anything. Sure you do. That. Uh, why not? It's not much good to me now. What's in the sack will help me find my way home? Guaranteed. So the magical raccoon gives Mistletoe this sack that's supposedly supposed to help him. And then he just kind of disappears. He flies up into the sky with his sparkly magic. So he's got the sack. He opens it up, hoping to find something that will help him get home. And what he finds are three kittens. Kittens? Hello. Hi. And I don't know what it is about these kittens, but they look dirty. I can't tell if they tried to make them look dirty or it's just because like the thickness of each strand of fur on these kittens' bodies is so thick that they just look like coarse and not fun to touch. Or, <laughs> that was a weird way to phrase that. These kittens don't look very fun to touch. They just don't look soft is what I'm trying to say. They look kind of greasy and dirty and not fun to touch. And honestly, Mistletoe's pissed. He's pissed that he got kittens when all he wanted was to find his way home. Spookly finally finds him and tries to get him to come back to the farm with him, but by now he's just pissed. He's just pissed off and he doesn't want anything to do with any of these people. For the last time, scat, scram, shoo! Go away! Why are you alone? Why are you alone? Why don't you go home? Why don't you go home? I don't have a home. I don't have a home. I'm out on my own. You mean, you don't have anywhere to go? What? Is this a surprise to you, Mistletoe? That these kittens don't have a home or someplace to go? You just bought them from a raccoon who was carrying them around in a sack. You think they've got somewhere to be, like someone's waiting on them to come home for dinner? I highly doubt that. They were in the care of a magic raccoon and he was willing to trade them away for a for a collar. So I no, I don't think that they've got anything crazy going on after this. Then there's a scene where the kittens are playing around on the ice and Mistletoe and Spookly get all worried because the ice is gonna break. So they go down to try to save them, but Mistletoe ends up falling in and they all have to save him. So, you know, he's learning about friends and how they help you and it's all part of a moral, I assume. Wait a minute, this cat fell in the water and only his butt got wet? Huh. Now from the top, make it drop because that's a wet ass pussy. Then we cut back and see some of these auditions for this Christmas extravaganza that the pumpkins are putting on. And to be honest, it's not a very interesting part of the movie. This is just like a B plot that they could have just gotten rid of entirely. It's not very compelling. I am now gonna drink a glass of water and sing a great Christmas song. Jingle bells, jingle bells. Now this act is a little bit unsettling to me because in this world, most of the characters, including Jack, are just inanimate objects that are alive for some reason. Like Jack is just a scarecrow. He's just a pile of hay wearing clothes. And so is the dummy. So is his puppet. It's made out of all the same things that Jack is. So my question is, why isn't that one alive? Like is Jack just holding up basically a, a corpse of one of his species and making it talk and pretending like it's a puppet? It because that seems disrespectful, honestly. Seems highly insensitive, in poor taste. Especially this part where he's like making it drown. Where he's like pouring water all over the corpse of a, I mean, honestly, what looks like a toddler of his species, because it's just a, a smaller version of him. Bobo's also auditioning for the Christmas extravaganza, and she's doing a magic show when suddenly some real magic happens. That sparkly magic stuff that the raccoon rode in on comes into the barn and deposits a present right in front of Bobo. Well, well now everybody calm down. Let's see what we have here. Well, it must be for me. I saw Yo, this girl has to chill, dude. Holy shit. Every single scene, all she does is like, that's mine, I'm gonna marry that, and I'm gonna be rich. It's not a good look. All right, so anyway, Spookly and Mistletoe and the Christmas kittens find their way back to the farm just as the snowstorm is starting to turn into a blizzard, but they can't get in the barn with their friends to get warm because there's a big pile of snow in front of the door. So instead, they go into the farmer's house. <laughs> Did you hear that, buddy? Someone said, ho, ho, ho. Ooh, these kids look kind of creepy, dude. Ho, ho, ho. This girl looks six, but also 40. Under the tree in the farmer's house, Mistletoe finds the present that magically blew into the barn. I don't know how it's suddenly in the farmer's house. They never explain that. I guess it just magically goes to there next. I don't know why it ever had to go in the barn, if that's the case. But he opens it up, and here's what he finds. This gift is for you because you truly believe it is better to give than it is to receive. Your friend, Santa. I know who I am, and 
And I know how I got here. He knew what had happened. And now I'll tell it to you. Santa promised he'd find Mistletoe a home of his own. A special place with a family so he'd never be alone. Wait, what? What? So this whole gift thing from Santa is like a home for Mistletoe? Dude, Mistletoe already had a home. It was with you. He lived with you for a year. And he seemed pretty happy too. It seemed like he was living a pretty luxurious life. He was Santa's cat. And it also says that he needs to find him a place with a family so he'll never be alone. Living with Santa, you would literally never be alone except for one day out of a year where he's working. The rest of the year, he's there. What kind of excuse is that? But before Santa could take Mistletoe to the home he had found, he snuck onto the sleigh, and suddenly, the sleigh was high off the ground. Mistletoe held on till he couldn't, and then, he let go. Uh, hey, Mistletoe, maybe say something? He just hung onto the back of the sleigh all night without saying a word? Dude, we've heard you meow before. We've heard you talk. We know you can. Why would he not say anything? Why is he just silently hanging from the back of the sleigh all night like, oh, damn. I'm gonna die. Mistletoe landed on the rooftop, covered with snow. He rolled and rolled across the farm and crashed into the barn. When they looked inside and saw a red, white, and green cat, they wanted him to stay. You're the best Christmas present under the tree. So Santa's big gift to Mistletoe for Christmas was a new home. Wow, way to go, you you insensitive sack of shit, Santa. That's not what Mistletoe wanted, clearly. He wanted to find his way back home. Santa getting Mistletoe a new home for Christmas is like getting your boyfriend a new girlfriend for your anniversary. That's gotta be the meanest gift I ever saw. Okay, well, everything's resolved now pretty much. This is the end of the movie. Now, are you ready for the part that threw me for a loop? when I watch this movie and I still have questions about. Well, here you go. Where you belong. Where you belong. Where you love, family and friends. Where your dreams begin and all your journeys end. Yeah, not only was Santa the raccoon, the conniving, greedy little scam artist of a raccoon. He was also the owl, that sick son of a bitch that stole Mistletoe's collar just to lead him into the woods to die. So I'm sorry, but I'm having a hard time trying to grasp Santa's reasoning for all this. What was he trying to accomplish? From his gift and everything, it makes it seem like Santa was doing all this to help Mistletoe find a loving home. Cause he never had that before and that's all Mistletoe ever really needed. But for one, Mistletoe already had a fine home. He lived with Santa. And then number two, this has to be the most elaborate, inefficient scheme to find Mistletoe a home that could possibly exist. Cause Mistletoe was already there. When Mistletoe met Spookly, he was already in the right place to be at his home. He was right next to the farmer's house. But for some reason, Santa was like, oh, I can't have this. Mistletoe making friends? No, no, no. So he snatched his collar and led him into the woods. And then when Mistletoe finally finds his collar, Santa becomes a raccoon. Santa takes his collar again and gives Mistletoe three kittens. Why does he need those kittens? And then he just lets him find his way back to the farmhouse by chance through a blizzard where he finds his new home. That's gotta be the dumbest scheme of all time. And honestly, it kind of just seems to me like Santa wanted mistletoe dead. And if that's not enough of a weird movie on its own, then imagine my surprise when I watch this movie again and realize that at the very beginning of this movie, when mistletoe is just a tiny baby kitten and Santa first finds him, he's already at the farmer's house. The porch that Santa finds him under is very clearly Holiday Hill Farm where all of this takes place under the farmer's house. He was was there the whole time. The whole plot of this movie is so pointless because if Santa had never found him in the first place, he still would have ended up at the farm. He probably would have met Spookly and all his friends. And yeah, maybe he wouldn't have found the kids, but like he would have been happy living with Spookly. Anyway, this movie was dumb. And now it's time to hear from our sponsor. This video has been sponsored by ExpressVPN, the number one VPN in the world. Let me tell you guys why I use ExpressVPN. First off, it's for my internet security and privacy needs. When you're out and about on a public Wi-Fi, you're susceptible to having your data snooped on by hackers. And even when you're at home, your internet 
internet service provider and advertisers can see some of your data as well. But ExpressVPN helps protect against that by encrypting your data and making you anonymous online. But that's not all because ExpressVPN also helps you unblock content that's not available in your area. For example, if there's a show, let's say Friends, for example, that you want to watch, but it's not available on Netflix for you because you live in the US. Well, you're in luck because Friends actually is available on Canadian Netflix. So if you log on to ExpressVPN, change your server location to Canada, suddenly Netflix thinks that you are in Canada and you can watch Friends. This can be helpful in a variety of situations like Netflix, but also like YouTube videos that could be blocked in your country, apps that could be blocked in your country. Now let me tell you a little bit about why ExpressVPN is the best VPN. They've got the fastest speeds. I haven't really even noticed my internet speed slowing down at all while using ExpressVPN. They've got 24 seven customer support. So should you have any issues, they can get it taken care of right away. It's easy to use. You just open the program and connect with one click. Couldn't be simpler. But don't just take my word for it because it's also been consistently rated the number one VPN by sources like TechRadar, CNET, The Verge, and many more. I've got ExpressVPN on everything from my laptop to my phone to my desktop computer. So if you want to check it out and find out how you can get three months for free, then visit the link in the description below. That's expressvpn.com slash Danny Gonzalez. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S VPN.com slash Danny Gonzalez. Thank you to ExpressVPN for sponsoring this video. And thank you to you guys for checking out ExpressVPN. When you guys check out my sponsors, it helps me get more in the future. So I really appreciate it. And I know that if you're looking for a VPN, ExpressVPN is the way to go. So check it out. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're new here and you're not subscribed yet, make sure you subscribe and turn on my notifications to join Greg. Greg is what I call my subscribers. We're the fastest growing army on the internet. Please do not look that up for the love of God. It's true, but you just have to trust me. So don't look it up and you just have to take my word for it because that is the way of the Greg. And okay, that's the end of the video. Bye. This video is over now. Yeah. Over now. Go find something else to watch Or just watch this video I know we had a lot of fun yeah. A lot of fun But you can't stay on this end screen forever no. This video is over now yeah. Over now So why are you still watching this?